our next chapter is on personality disorders now personality traits are what makes you who you are these are genetic and also determined by the environment this is something that is not a disorder it becomes a disorder when there are maladaptive practices of behavior that are normal to you but drives other people crazy so inflexible and rigidly pervasive behavior that causes significant distress or emo- or impaired functioning if the person is unaware of the problem that means they are usually fine with that behavior this means it they are egocentric if the person is unhappy about the situation that means they are aware that they are not they have a different form of functioning this is called ego dystonic we will talk a bit about ego in our next chapter on ego defenses and this is usually present by early adulthood there are different personality tests and the two broad branches of these are objective or projective tests objective tests includes this mmpi test which has 500 true or false questions that will determine your personality projective tests have ambiguous answers such as sentence completion the rosa test the tat test where you have to describe a given picture i will put a picture of the rosarks test on the screen and projective tests are better with kids because they have to describe something they do not have to give a standard or they don't have to read 500 questions so this is easier to do it with kids now when we consider a personality disorder we don't usually diagnose them while they are children we wait till they are at least the age of 18 and there's one condition in which it is essential to wait till the person is 18 years of age that is antisocial personality disorder we will talk about that shortly there are three clusters of personality one cluster is the weird personality now it it's important to know that we are talking about disorders the cluster a personality consists of th- the weird people the odd eccentric type people and there are three types here this is the paranoid type these people are always suspicious about others they are suspicious about their partner when they go to a supermarket they wonder if they got the correct change or the correct way let's say they wanted 1 kilo of sugar did they get 1 kilo of sugar they are always paranoid about situations sometimes they have okay most of them will have a profound cynical view of the world in the sense the world is not really a good, great place everyone is trying to trick others things like this and they are always vigilant next we have the schizoid personality this is simply a loner these are people who will withdraw voluntarily from all social activities and they do not care they are happy with their social isolation when you consider this with avoidant personality the avoidant personality people are afraid of creating new connections because they worry they might get rejected so they want new connections but they're too scared of getting rejected that they don't even try schizoid personality disorder is when the person does not care about social activities they don't go out let's take a look at this case then we will understand this more a 50 year old man who is considered by his community as a reclusive due to him rarely re- leaving his house for the past 25 years his family describes him as an emotionally cold person who prefers solitary activity members of his community would leave him gift baskets but he never opens the door to greet them during an interview with a social worker he avoids eye contact and maintains a monotone speech throughout they just don't like other people 
they want to be alone then there's the schizotypal personalities now when we learn schizophrenia we learned a lot of words which begin with the uh, prefix schizo c h i z o so let's just look at the different types schizo form disorders then schizophrenia then schizo affective disorder so schizotypal is a personality disorder in which these people would have really odd beliefs like this this tree this medication which is going to cure covid which will stop you getting covid and they have magical thinking that these plants are talking to me telling me okay uh, if you put me into this medicine it will work they are on the precipice of psychosis so they can very easily fall into psychosis and if they do they usually have a brief period of psychosis there is a strong association to schizophrenia as it's obvious so schizophreniform disorder is when the diagnosis is between 1 month to 6 months of schizophrenia of this thought disorder schizophrenia is greater than 6 months of this thought disorder we have discussed this already schizoaffective is schizophrenia plus mood disorder uh, which is which do not occur together Next, we have the cluster B personality, the wild, the dramatic, the emotional type of people. They have a borderline flamboyant and the need to be the best. And they are easily predisposed to mood disorders and substance abuse. First, let's take a look at the antisocial uh, personality. This derives from conduct disorder. This is very important. As a child, those who have conduct disorder would go on to develop antisocial personality disorder. And until the age of 18, we do not diagnose a person as ASPD. Once they are over the age of 18 years, then you can say that this is an antisocial personality disorder. And before that, the conduct, it is considered as a conduct disorder. Now, what are conduct disorders? These are people who disregard the right of others without any remorse. They just don't care about doing something wrong. They involve in criminal activities, impulsive, hostile, and manipulative. Think of a politician. Think of someone who gets into fights all the time. Think of someone who will um, hit a teacher and not really care about that. If the age is under the age of 18 it is a conduct disorder if it continues into adulthood it is considered as ASPD so let's take a look at this a 12 year old boy is brought to the school counselor after starting a fire in the school lunchroom when asked why he did that he claims and this is a very common statement that they would make that's the way of the world the boy has been having multiple episodes of acting out in school including stealing from classmates on questioning, he denies distractibility, periods of elevated mood or self-esteem, impulsivity or any form of hallucination. So he is not ADHD or any other mood disorder. This is a case of conduct disorder because this is a 12-year-old boy. If he was over the age of 18, he would be diagnosed as an antisocial disorder. We'll talk about this defense mechanism in the next chapter. Next. We have the borderline people, the personality type of borderline people. This is a condition which is associated with unstable mood. They have sp splitting, sorry. They see the world as either good or bad. They see everything as good or bad. And they have problems maintaining relationship. They have a fear of ad abandonment. So when they get into a relationship, they are afraid that the partner would leave them. They have a lot of impulsivity and self-mutilation. 
there is a reason for this these people have a sense of emotional emptiness so this is going to manifest as pain emotional pain and to get rid of this emotional pain they would do things that would bring physical pain and these are the people who would cut themselves sorry about the way i drew them but these are the people who would cut themselves by bringing this physical pain it helps them relieve themselves of the mental pain again splitting is the major defense mechanism everything is good or bad now when we talk about treatment for these personality disorders the number one treatment is psychotherapy this is the only way that you can convince a person to change their personality all of these medication can be used to manage symptoms of the associated type such as such as uh, the ocd symptoms can be managed with medication we will talk about ocd type personalities soon next we have the hist histrionic type of personality these are the ones who seek attention they have to be in the center of attention they are sexually proactive provocative that means they would use their sexuality to gain attention next we have the narcissistic personalities who are the narcissists the best example are politicians why do we call them narcissists because they have a high degree of grandiosity and a sense of entitlement they don't have any empathy and requires excess admiration from others they have a fragile self esteem and are often jealous of others what does this mean so let's say someone mocks him or says something that they don't like even if it's something tiny they would walk away from that situation and say until you apologize in front of everyone i will not come back this is actually very common in politicians and doctors next is the cluster c personality those who are worried the anxious type of people they there is obviously a genetic association with anxiety disorders and these people as we discussed earlier there is the avoidant personality type where these people would be hypersensitive sensitive to rejection and criticism so they are timid people but they desire rela relationships with others it's not like schizoid disorder it's just that they are afraid of rejection so in instead of trying to make new connections they will just not do that they are sensitive to criticism next we have the com uh, the control freaks the obsessive compulsive personality disorders it is when they have the preoccupation of things having to be perfect to have control these are the controlling people and the perfectionists they only believe in their own beliefs if they think something is right that's the only thing that they will believe it's very hard to convince these people otherwise and then there's the dependent type Oh yeah a good example for obsessive compulsive personality is monica from friends next is the dependent personality these people have a excess need of support from others they are afraid of making their own decisions they okay they are willing to be submissive just so that they have someone else making the decisions for them so if there are a lot of cases where the person would come to the hospital with a lot of injuries from weird sexual activities but they don't want the police to be told because they don't want to lose that person the uh, one who's causing these problems because they need that person for their support to make decisions we will discuss transference and counter transference through case studies and what you need to know here is this is not a type of defense mechanism when we begin our chapter of 
ego defenses there's three terms that you need to know one is instinct and there are two basic instincts present in people from birth in all animals there's two instincts present from birth that is sex and aggression these behaviors do not need to be taught consider a cat they don't need to be taught how to have sex they don't need to be taught how to be aggressive same in humans next ego this develops shortly after birth these are our defense mechanisms what we will discuss now and these mechanisms are how we ward off anxiety and control in instinctive urges and emotions now these are conscious behaviors this is our chapter today then there is another type which is called super ego this is what we learn from parents your conscience so they will teach you that stealing is not something good it's bad what happens if you have parents who are bad they would teach you okay stealing is fine it's not a big deal so our topic today is on ego defenses and this three types of defenses we would learn the first one is immature defenses and under that projection this is when you transfer your feelings to someone else whatever you want or think you say it's not you it's them someone else so if a man who wants to cheat on his wife accuses his wife of being unfaithful it's basically saying it's not me it's you this is called projection and as we learned in personality disorders this is associated with paranoia personalities next we have denial now it's important to know that these are unconscious feelings the only conscious defense mechanism we will talk about is suppression so everything else is unconscious they're supposed to help you but they may also hurt you if it hurts you you can go seeking help for that otherwise you can leave it alone the next defense mechanism is denial this is when the reality does not penetrate this is common after hearing some bad news about death or illness let's say you hear that someone died someone close to you died the reality does not penetrate into your head they would be like no they did not die or no i'm not sick and this is most commonly seen in substance abuses where they would deny the use of substance this is done to avoid becoming aware of some painful reality so when you question them they are denying it now what happens if as a doctor this denial is interfering with the treatment if they are denying okay i don't have cancer then you need to confront you need to tell them do you know the risks of not testing further and if they say yes then let them go if they are compliant with the treatment or if they don't have any uh, they don't do anything against the treatment then you do not interfere you don't try to confront the denial splitting is when people see the extremes of two opposites everything is either good or bad and uh, there is two terms that you need to know which is commonly tested it is called idealized where you say something positive about something only positive like my wife is the best or you devalue something negative about something so if the person has references which are always good and bad let's say a patient comes to you and says that you are such a friendly doctor but all the other doctors are horrible this is a split and this is associated with borderline personality disorder 
next this blocking this is basically you are aware of the memory loss and knows that you are forgetting something but you would rather say i do not know instead of giving a wrong answer it's like saying uh, something is on the tip of my tongue but i just can't get it out this is what blocking is next regression this is when a person returns to an earlier level of functioning such as acting childish and this is usually seen after some sort of a trauma for example this is very common in children who would regress into a previously uh, they would start bed betting so they have already passed that stage of development but because of some sort of a emotional trauma such as the divorce of the parents they would regress into bed betting and it is important that they know that the child is not the reason for the divorce and also this is seen in adults when they are sick you can imagine an adult who acts like a child when they are sick they need to be taken care of fed with the spoon all of this this is regression identification is the unconscious assumption of characteristics qualities or traits of another person so like we discussed what super ego is this is something that you get from someone else you learn this is unconscious this is not imitation which is conscious you are observing the person and unconsciously trying to copy them if they say that smoking is good you will identify the behavior of smoking to be good this is what you call the super ego we discussed what super ego is this is very common in children or oh, okay let's say adolescents when they are obsessed with some celebrity they would try to copy them they are the way they dress all of these if it is conscious it is imitation if it is unconscious then it is identification intellectualization is simply what you do when you hear something bad you use you use facts and logic to distance yourself from a stressful situation emotionally so let's say a patient is diagnosed with cancer they will get rid of their anxiety by talking about the topic in an intellectual way they will look up the disease they will know more about the treatment than you as a doctor they will know all the different types of treatment and they will start explaining that to you this is the way of reducing the anxiety of hearing this news next we have anxiety defenses now these are defenses that help you avoid anxiety the first one is displacement this is when the emotions are shifted to another person in a same way that resembles the original emotion so let's say you are angry with someone let's say you are angry at your boss you can't take it out on the boss so you take it out on someone else the target changes but the source of anger the anger stays the same and this is usually seen in organizational or family hierarchies so if the father scolds the mother the mother would scold you if you watched the tv show how i met your mother there is an episode called the chain of screaming which later becomes the circle of screaming uh which is basically about displacement next we have repression this is something when you are unaware of a memory loss now there's two things that you need to differentiate one is repression the other one is suppression now the best way to understand this is we think of our mind and we store our memories in the in this locker in repression what happens is you put your memory into this locker you lock it and you throw away the key this is what happens in repression so you are unaware of the memory loss but in suppression you are aware you 
remember it it's in these drawers and if something painful such as or a s- embarrassing moment comes and it reminds you of that then if there's a trigger then it will open the drawer and bring out all those memories that is suppression so let's go into repression it was once recognized and but is no longer there for example a 20 year old does not remember going to counseling during his parents divorce 10 years earlier this was a bad memory and it was locked in the locker and the key is thro- thrown out suppression is the opposite you know it happened but you are doing everything you can to avoid that painful memory isolation of affect this is when you separate your brain from your heart let me tell it simply like that it's when your brain and your heart is separate so in a stressful situation let's say uh you see a murder you will talk about that murder you will tell everything in graphic detail leaving out the emotional response next is acting out this is simply an outburst this is very common in adolescents where acting out would mask their feelings such as they would have intense sex they would overeat they would fight next we have rationalization this is when you make an excuse to ourselves or for your own behavior you do something wrong and to avoid self blame you would rationalize give reasons as to why it was okay uh, some examples are politicians taking a bribe saying everyone does it or you kill a random person and saying he deserved it you did something wrong and you are trying to justify the wrong behavior to avoid self blame next reaction formation now this is a condition in which you see in ocd you need to understand the association of ocd in this but first we'll talk a bit about what this is you want to do something and you find it socially acceptable so- socially unacceptable so you do the complete opposite of that so let's say you are a porn addict and you know it's wrong so what you do is you become a priest the complete opposite of that and one of the most common examples you would see on usmle is a stepmother who treats a child she hates with excessive nurturing and overprotection now it's important to know that in this case of reaction forming a porn addict would become the complete opposite of that which is a priest we will soon learn something called sublimation in this case the porn addict would do something this unacceptable impulse in a socially acceptable way so this porn addict would become a porn censor what is this job it's basically they have to watch porn and see if there's anything that shouldn't be there so they they tended to their porn addiction in a more mature way and sublimation is considered the most mature defense mechanism now what is the relationship to ocd well we have to understand there is an obsession here a person who doesn't want to get dirty okay they want to get dirty sorry person wants to get dirty this is their obsession and the way they would create a reaction they know that this is wrong is by the compulsion of washing hands every day washing hands for hours at a time this is a reaction formation the obsession is the need to get dirty but then the compulsion 
is going to be the complete opposite of that. Washing hands. Next, undoing. This is when you try to reverse an un unacceptable behavior by fixing the impulse. So let's say uh, a man is sexually aroused by a woman he just met and he leaves suddenly to buy his wife flowers. You are trying to undo that, uh, that feeling, that sexual arousal by going and buying his wife flowers. We have passive aggression. This is when you express a hostile feeling in a non-confrontational manner. Let's say a child is hostile towards an uncle that they don't like. So what they would do is they won't talk to that uncle. This is a non-confrontational manner. They're not going to show direct opposition. They're not going to go and tell the uncle, I don't like you. I don't want to talk to you. They just will ignore that person. And other examples include patient who's late or non-compliant. They are expressing a hostile feeling by acting out in a non-confrontational manner. Next is undoing. This is when you distance yourself from one's experiences. So let's say a victim of sexual abuse will suddenly appear to be numb and detached when she uh, is being raped. So there was a TV show on Netflix. Uh, I will put the name for that. There was undoing behavior of that girl. She appeared numb and detached when she was being raped. And this is associated with substance abuse and dissociative disorders. Next, we have mature defenses. The most mature of these defenses, the one which is considered the most mature is sublimation. Suppression is when a person would focus on other tasks to prevent worrying about some upcoming event. Now think of it as you have a exam coming up, but instead of focusing on that, you would go out and play. You would do some sport. So while you are playing the sport, you have suppressed your feelings, your memory of the exam. That is a common natural defense. Altruism is when we take reaction forming, this is when the person would have the opposite thought. But in this case, they would alleviate the negative feelings, not by opposite thoughts. They would go and give. They would be providing a lot of unsolicited generosity, such as a drug lord, building houses for the poor. He knows that he is doing something wrong and the way he feels better about it is by building houses for the poor, giving money for the poor. Next is sublimation. This is the gratification of an unacceptable impulse in a socially acceptable way. So there's something bad you want to do, but you know it's wrong. So you find a way which is socially acceptable such as a person who wants to set off fires, who wants to start fires, will sublime the feelings by becoming a special effects specialist that lets the person legally set off fires. This is the channeling the need through other socially acceptable means. And finally, we have humor. Humor is used to feel better in unconscious situations. This is very uh, commonly used. Let's take a look at the case study. We have a 40 year old man who comes to the office to establish new medical care. The patient has no prior medical or surgical history and takes no medication. He moved to the area three weeks ago for work and he says, I quit my last job because they hired a co-worker who does the same work as me. The patient then crosses his arm dramatically and describes how he had previously quit another job abruptly after his bo boss told him he was difficult to work with because he was always trying to take over meetings. 
he burst into tears and says i thought he was my friend on mental status examination the speech is loud and is not pressured facial ex- expressions and hand gestures appear exaggerated which of the following is the most likely diagnosis in this patient paranoid personality is when you are suspicious schizoid personality are the loners schizophrenia is a thought disorder social anxiety disorder is when you have different if when you are afraid of different social situations the answer here is histrionic personality disorder these are the people who want to be the center of attention so he did not want another coworker doing the same job as him he tries to take over meetings he has loud speech facial expressions and hand gestures are exaggerated now why is this not narcissistic personality disorder because these people do not have remorse now histrionic personality disorder people they have remorse you can see here he bursts into tears and says i thought he was my friend but narcissistic personality disorder people they do not have any sort of remorse they need to be the center of attention uh, they present similar except that they do not have any remorse needs constant praise and approval a 42 year old man comes to the clinic for the treatment of a skin discoloration he says the skin discoloration was due to applying magical chemicals the patient would like the patch removed because his colleague is sending negative magic that causes it to enlarge the patient does not have close relationships on physical examination he is dressed in a pink suit pant and a red t-shirt a nevus is visible on his left arm and the patient makes minimal eye contact he has a constricted affect and speaks in a formal manner which of the following is the most likely diagnosis of this patient the answer to this is schizotypal personality disorder this is not a delusional disorder he is not suspicious about other people and he is not a loner this is not what the case says then schizophrenia usually requires the time and also pa- symptoms of psychosis and visual hallucinations all of this this is more of a person who is of schizotypal personality disorder they have weird abnormal thoughts a 23 year old woman is brought to the emergency department by her friends due to suicide ideation the patient's mother found her in the bathroom holding a razor blade to her wrist and saying i might as well be dead her mother states she started a new relationship last week and thought he was her soulmate now this is a typical bipolar disorder case self harm gets into relationships and thinks they that they met their soulmate but there would be a lot of arguments in the following days and they would easily break up and she would go into a state of self harm all her relationships start and end like this bipolar patients will have a lot of relationships which start and end like this they have strong attachment but then that does not last she adds that the patient has always been quick to anger and insecure about herself she has periods of sadness lasting 1 to 2 days in which she goes into a black hole she has a history of three prior suicide attempts she has no significant improvement in her depressive symptoms with medication the patient is anxious and tearful physical examination is otherwise unremarkable which of the following is the most likely diagnosis this is not a mood disorder this is borderline personality disorder the case will tell you of a person who cannot start a relationship and then there would be self harm they would have they would be quick to anger they would have multiple relationships which did not work out or they would be highly attached to their partner we will see other cases a 
37 year old woman comes to the office due to marital difficulties his wife says my husband is convinced i'm having an affair with my co-worker she says that he is constantly demanding to look at her phone and has grabbed it from her several times the husband says he has always struggled with his temper and that he shouts with little provocation and his mood goes up and down throughout the day she says that he binges on alcohol every few months He has made unnecessary expensive expenses which resulted in significant debt. Prior to their mar- marriage 2 years ago, the patient has had multiple short-lived relationships, each of which ended abruptly. The patient expresses remorse for upsetting his wife and begs her not to leave him. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Now, now the answer for this is borderline personality disorder they will have transient paranoia symptoms and psychotic symptoms such as delusional jealousy during times of stress and there would be sp- splitting self injury is common but it is not required for diagnosis it is a very common symptom in children and also note that these patients have a strong attachment to their partners they would protect their partner really strongly they would be very jealous they protecting the partner but also they will have a lot of problems with the partner there's a lot of psychosis involved they would get mad if they feel like the partner has abandoned them they need the partner around all the time paranoid personality disorder is basically the control freaks they try to control every single thing about you in your life about the actions all of this next let's diagnose the defense mechanisms we have a 30 year old man who comes for an appointment with a new physician he is given several paperwork to fill and the patient politely takes the forms to fill however when the paperwork is analyzed by the physician it contained only his name he responds i'm sure a doctor like you should be able to take a good history he's not acting out if he was acting out he would be more likely to throw the papers at the doctor saying you fill it yourself this is a typical case of passive aggression now the best way to learn these is to read them once or twice that's more than enough because this is basically learning english words all these personality disorders sorry ego defenses are simply words that should be in your own vocabulary so don't try to memorize this just read it once or twice that is more than enough a 40 year old man begins psychotherapy due to depression and escalating conflicts with his partner he makes progress and also gains insight as to why his mother was rarely around and has recently told her i i am angry that you were never there for me the patient had to cancel an appointment recently and during the next visit he says the patient says to the doctor i feel i am not your priority this is a case of transference the feelings of abandonment that he had for his mother he's transferring that to the physician because he had to cancel an appointment a 13 year old boy is brought to the office due to setting off a fire in a classroom his parents are upset about his poor grades and has and he has been suspended recently for stealing money from another student his aggressive behavior has worsened in the last year when asked why he stole money he responds he doesn't need that money and the patient uses illicit drugs this is a typical case of conduct disorder these are children who would break rules go against the society norms and if the diagnosis is made before 18 years old it is considered conduct disorder after 18 years of age this is considered antisocial personality disorder pyromania is people who love setting off fires but then he has a history of stealing money he has a history of using drugs this is more typical of conduct disorder and obviously this is not passive aggression A doctor is paged by the nurse due to 
a patient being wanting to leave against medical advice on reaching the patient the patient tells the doctor you don't know what you're doing you are not even a real doctor the patient's words reminds her of her professors who would often say similar phrases at her and she angrily replies you can't leave i'm ordering restraints to calm you down this is counter transference when a physician transfers feelings of her own experiences towards a patient this is considered counter transference a 48 year old woman brings her stepson to the clinic for well child evaluation she never wanted children but seems excessively concerned about the child what is this condition called we have a woman who never wanted children but is now the step mother of a child whom she cares a lot for this is reaction formation A student recently finished an exam and is anxious about her performance. She does not go near her friends who were discussing the dis- difficulty of the exam and tries everything to not think about the upcoming result. What is this called? This is typical suppression. You are suppressing the feelings of the exam of remembering about the exam and the possible results by not thinking about it or doing everything else possible. Finally, let's diagnose these personality disorders. A 28-year-old woman comes with anxiety. The patient recently turned down a relationship from a co-worker she had feelings for. She says that going into that relationship would have been too stressful in case something happens. The patient avoids social gatherings and because she feels the co-workers might not like her dress or appearance. She fantasizes about getting married someday but is only close with her parents. This statement is very typical of someone who's an avoidant personality disorder. They try to avoid all sorts of social social situations because they don't want to feel like they might get embarrassed. A 36-year-old man is visited by his social Okay, uh, let me explain why this is not schizoid personality disorder. This pe- person is looking for a relationship. He's looking for someone to get married and he's close with her parents she is not trying to be alone next we have a 36 year old man who is visited by his social worker due to getting no response for weeks after being diagnosed with covid-19 the patient's final call to the social worker was brief saying that he no, lo- no longer has any symptoms his neighbors has not seen the man leave the house in weeks he does not have any close friends and seems un- unconcerned about it he is not acting out he is not creating fires he is not destroying property this is a typical schizoid personality disorder he's a loner